Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning, viewers. Welcome to the Daily Fountain, Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Saturday, December 10th, 2022. Shall we pray? Holy Father, we return thanks and praise to you for the love you have shown to us through the provision of the great gift of life and the gift of salvation. We ask that your word be revealed to us and that by the light of your word, our lives will be ordered to your praise and glory on earth here. In Jesus' name, amen. Hear the word of God as it is written in the book, Zechariah chapter 9, beginning at the ninth verse. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass, and upon a cord, the fall of an ass. Now cut off the chariots from Ephraim, and the horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and they shall speak peace unto the heathen. And his dominion shall be from sea even to sea, from the river even to the ends of the earth. As for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit wherein is no water. Turn you to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. Even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A topic this morning is rejoice greatly. Today's passage as inspired by the Holy Spirit through the prophet Zechariah was a prophetic encouragement for the Messianic advent. A prophetic encouragement concerning the coming of Jesus Christ. And Zechariah precisely used certain attributes to refer to this great king, while he encouraged the daughters of Zion to rejoice as they will soon see the coming king. And so one of such attributes of this great king is that he will take away the chariots and the war horses. Up until now, Israel has been faced with a lot of crises, a lot of commotions, a lot of wars, a lot of bitterness, a lot of evil, because the kings they had in their own days couldn't save them from the hands of their enemy. They were kings that were limited in strength, in defense. And the Bible told us that 
the appearance of this great king will bring end to the chariots of war, will bring end to the invasion of war horses, the appearance of war horses in the territory of God's people. The battle bow will be broken and there will be peace again in the land, in the territory of God's people. Ultimately, it's important to remind ourselves that every life that has embraced Christ, has embraced Jesus, is a life that is bound to experience internal and external peace. Jesus said, peace I give unto you, not as the world give. The usage of the word, O daughter of Zion here, is not a limitation to the feminine class. It's a language of tenderness for the people of God, the beloved people of God, who have been in state of depression, who have been in state of discouragement, who have been in state of anxiety premised upon the troubles, turbulence, the crisis all around them. And here the Bible says that we have need to rejoice for the king that is coming is a king who is just. And having with him is the ability to save. Having with him is the ability to reconcile men to himself, to bring men from the tyranny of sin and the consequences that sin has hurt that man. The Bible told us that this king, is having with him salvation. He is lowly riding upon an ass and upon a donkey. This is a symbol of the reign of his peace. It's a symbol of his humility, his meekness, though a great king, though a mighty king. But he is a king that is not coming with physical sword. He is a king that is coming to secure the covenant of peace with his people through his blood. The Bible told us that in verse 11, As for thee, by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit wherein is no water. The coming of this great king is to establish justice, to establish peace, to establish order, to establish prosperity in our individual lives, in our marriages, in our society. One of the greatest mistakes that humanity has made over time is to live without Christ. And we have seen the great effect of this over time. When Christ is left out of our lives, the result is always turbulence. It's always trauma. It's always tribulation, pain, plights and perils of all kinds. Frustration, internally and externally. Defeats, setbacks. When Christ is left out, in a home, in a marriage, in a family, the consequences, the results are always quarrel, distrust, self centeredness pains, differences that are not reconciled, 
divorce, and of course death is a result. When Christ is left out in a society, the consequences are devastating. They are beyond the moment. The consequences are seen in different sphere of influence in the society. There is great decline in the family sector, the religious sector, the education, the industry, the commerce and industry, in government and policy, politics. We see the effects of a country, a nation that has abandoned Christ. And so, the call to rejoice as a family, as a nation, is a call to embrace Jesus, to embrace Christ. Our delight is in the fact that the appearance of Jesus in our lives will make a great difference. Not just in our individual lives, in the future of our home, in the future of the society, in the future of our nation. Welcoming Christ is welcoming peace. Welcoming Christ is welcoming progress, is welcoming prosperity into our nation. Welcoming in Christ is bringing an end to the reign of evil, to the reign of wickedness, to the reign of pains, of plights and perils. He said, for I will cut off the chariots from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem and the battle bow shall be cut off. God will cut off everything that brings devastation, that brings pains, bitterness to us. The moment we receive Christ into our lives. And that brings joy. Peace. When there is peace, there is reason to rejoice. When there is peace, there is reason to celebrate. In the absence of peace and in the presence of crisis, there is always going to be sadness. There is always going to be pain. There is always going to be regret. But the assurance to us today as a people, as a family, as a church, as a nation, is that our king is coming. And there is a need for us to open up our heart. For us who have received Jesus, though it may be tough, it may be challenging with the world, let us know. Jesus said, peace I give unto you, not as the world gives. Peace I give unto you, not as the world gives. The writer of the devotional booklet made certain emphasis. Um, he said that Christ is the only one that can bring this peace to our lives. He's the only one that can bring this peace to our home. He's the only one that can bring this peace to our society. And hence, he is called the Prince of Peace in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 14. With Jesus in your life, with Jesus in your family, with Jesus in the institutions, in your career, in your vocation, with Jesus in our nation, we have great cause to rejoice. With Jesus 
in our schools, we have great cause to rejoice. Beloved, as we go into the day, let us have this spiritual awareness that having Christ in us is a sufficient motivation for us to face life with courage, with boldness. He will take away the chariots and the war horses. Everything that this represents, whether pain, everything that this represents, whether distress, everything that war horses represents in our spiritual life, in our marital life, in our career. The word of God says the presence of Christ in our lives is a sufficient supernatural signal to end such crisis. The presence of Christ in our lives will provide a system of endless victory and bring defeat to the camp of darkness. For he will break the battle bow. God will not allow the enemy to prosper over us. He will not allow the enemy to prosper over our family. But that's only when we have embraced our king. The people said, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Our king comes with peace. And having him in our lives, all reasons to run Heter Sketer is over. Our kings come with a hand to rescue us. As many who have found themselves in one imprisonment or the other. This great king who is not coming with physical weapon, but coming in the audacity of the blood of his covenant, he will rescue the prisoners from the waterless pit. In ancient Israel, offenders were always thrown in waterless pits. And I like to relate it in this form to us that whatever pit we find ourselves, the presence of this great king, Christ in us, we signal an end to it all. Beloved, with Jesus in our lives, once again, we have great reasons to rejoice. We have great reasons to celebrate. We have no reasons to regret. And we are going to pray this morning. And our prayer is that Jesus be found in our lives, in our home, in our daily experience. And that his peace will bring joy to us. Shall we pray this morning? First, I'd like you to, wherever you are, bow your hearts 
and I appreciate Jesus for the love he has showered upon us. Thank him for the gift of life. Thank him for the privilege to be part of the great work of redemption, the gift of salvation. And ask that the Lord Jesus come into your life. He said, Lo, I am with you. Ask that he find a comfortable place in your heart, in your life, in your home, in your family, and everything that signal irritation, whatever is offensive to the presence of Jesus in your life, in my life. Ask that the power of the Holy Spirit will dismiss it. Pray this morning that the presence of Jesus will take away the chariots and the war horses. All evil arrows that are sent against you. The word of God said, the battle bow will be broken. Can you break every battle bow that are fired at you, to your marriage, your spiritual life, your ministry? I'd like you to declare peace upon your life. Peace upon your family, peace upon your health, peace upon everywhere, peace upon our nation. Pray that as many who are prisoners of passion, as many who are prisoners of depression, as many who are prisoners of one setback or the other, that the Lord will free them. Ask that the power of God will restore twice, will restore double to as many, to you and to others, whom the devil has taken advantage of in one way or the other. Pray that may the peace of God bring great joy to us as individuals, to us as a family, as a church, and as a nation. We pray in the name of Jesus. Father, we return thanks and praise to you. We ask that as we go about our daily walk. Jesus, may you be found in our lives, in our daily experience. May your peace inspire great joy in us always. At the end of our journey here on earth, may eternity be our zenith reward. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, Subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.